somebody outside. Awesome. So, hey, population density and distribution. Each population has a density, a dispersion, and a reproductive strategy. So that's going to be our key concept for this podcast. Let's take a look at population density. Population density is the number of individuals that live in a defined area. So exactly what is that? What does that mean for an ecologist? The density itself is a measurement of the number of individuals living in a defined space. So when we looked at the pyramid models, we looked at biomass or the pyramid of numbers. And we talked about what would it be like to go in and count every single plant species that's a producer in a particular ecosystem, right? We decided that that would be really difficult to do. So scientists can actually calculate population density. And so what they do is they take the number of individuals divided by the area or the units squared. So it could be meters squared, it could be miles squared, it could be yards squared, it doesn't really matter. That tells us the population density. So once we've determined the density, we look at the geographic dispersion of a population. And this is what shows how the individuals in a population in terms of, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. It shows how the individuals in a population are spaced out within the ecosystem. That dispersion could be clumped, it could be like here, it could be uniform like here, or it could be random like this one. So make sure that you label those in your note, on your note sheet. Now, we're going to take a look at some examples in real life. So there are three different types of dispersion. This picture, the school of fish, shows a clumped dispersion. The clumped dispersion um, is typical in an ocean ecosystem because a lot of these populations of, of fish will group together to avoid being caught by predators. Now here's another example. This one is uniform. All of the birds are nesting but they're nesting equal distances apart from each other, so that way they have enough space. In this example, we've got our tree sloth. And the tree sloth, these guys are completely random. So when we f try and find them in an ecosystem, you're going to find them wherever they are at any particular point in time. So what we try and do then is to describe the reproductive strategy of a species, we look at what's called the survivorship curve of that species. This is a diagram showing the number of surviving members over time for a measured set of births. So what we can see here is we can see ranges of age along with the number of deaths that occur during that age period. So then that shows us the number of survivors for each time period. And then we can calculate the percent that actually survive in that age range. This is beneficial because in some species, some organisms, oh my goodness, my dog is going crazy running around the house right now. I'm so sorry. This gives us an idea. Oh my gosh, you won't stop either. So, sorry. Um, it might indicate that some organisms are more likely to die at a really young age versus at a really old age. All right, so final piece is that these survivorship curves then can be graphed and we can identify them as being either type 1, 2, or 3. So type 1 is a low level or infant mortality and an older population. Okay, so look at the type 1 line. That's the orange line here. Okay, then this is really common to large mammals and humans. The type 2, the survivorship rate is equal at all stages of life. So that's the green line right here. Okay, That's really common to birds and reptiles. In type 3, that's the blue line. Type 3 has a very high birth rate and a very high infant mortality rate. So that's really common to most of our invertebrates and plants. You can plant a whole bunch of seeds in the garden, but usually you only get a couple of plants that actually grow. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit about survivorship curves. Um, we're going to be doing some activities in class that help us understand exactly how do we collect this type of data so that way we can um, study these, um, these data points.